So why do we care about conflicts of interest? Why does it matter if an individual or company benefits from a transaction? It does matter. Conflicts of interest undermine the trust and integrity of a transaction. Why would a company go to the expense of tendering if they know they're not going to get the contract or they have no chance of getting the contract? So Sid, what are we seeing in this area? What we have seen, Meg, is um for instance, one of our clients, um, they've had an issue where their project manager, uh, who's involved integral to the procurement process, um, was using the client's contractors to build his home. As a result of social media analysis, we identified that there were connections between the project manager and the contractor's family members. Um, there were significant issues with the client's uh, controls around conf conflicts of interest. And as a result, the project manager was able to get away with this. So yeah, I've seen another example um, where a procurement manager at a particular department um, was able to award con numerous contracts, generally low volume, to, to um, an associate of his. Um, the issue there was generally around the segregation of duties, and that's how it occurred. That's right, and that, that really leads us on to the control considerations that our clients need to be thinking about. Um, the foremost, uh, the most important uh, control consideration is the fact that you need to have an established framework for the management of conflicts of interest. Um, and that really is underpinned by three pillars. The first one being that uh, there needs to be an adequate training uh, system for staff around conflicts of interest. There needs to be an encouragement um, for the declaration of conflicts of interest, but that needs to come uh, from um, the management. And also, there needs to be a regular review of any declared conflicts and of the compliance with the policies and procedures. Yeah, and that then once you've got you know, a framework for the employees to declare their conflicts and that they know you're regularly checking as a deterrence measure. So I think another key pillar to this is to ensure that you have an adequate segregation of duties. And as part of that, you might want to consider regularly rotating your employees around, um, you know, to, to minimise the occurrence of collusion or the, the, the opportunity to develop relationships which may lead to collusion. I guess that leads me to my next point. There needs to be ongoing of testing of, of your adherence to policies and procedures. And a way to do this might be through data analytics. There's some tests that you might like to run. So you might to do, like to do comparisons between vendor uh, and employee databases to identify connections. You may want to look at one-time vendors, for example. There are many tests you can run and it'll depend on the situation.